Hello students, as uh, discussed in the last slide in the last module that uh, in this module we are going to combine both the match filter based approach and the serial search uh, active correlator based serial search uh, architecture uh, to see whether we can uh, get the advantage of both of them uh, in a new one and uh, that one we call a two step uh, mechanism that we will be discussing today. So, fundamentally we are uh, going to club the match filter based passive uh, correlator architecture with the active correlator based serial search architecture and we understand that match filter gives us a very fast acquisition at the cost of high probability of false alarm and high complexity and on the contrast uh, serial search mechanism gives us very high detection probability lowering the, the false alarm and uh, at the cost of long uh, acquisition time. Okay. So, target is what final target is to get uh, the high detection probability low false alarm with uh, reasonable time of acquisition. Okay. So, here we are the mechanism is called a two step synchronization mechanism and uh, we understand that uh, the, the communication in the push to talk network on which all these schemes we are continuously discussing. The communication there is of burst type we call it a sporadic characteristics of the communication and uh, rapid and accurate techniques are required really. Uh, to facilitate the desynchronization on each and every transmission packet. Uh, so, that is the main motivation of this uh, third form where actually fast acquisition is required also uh, very good uh, acquisition I mean uh, accurate tech accurate acquisition is also will be the most important part. And uh, this uh, two level synchronization mechanism of FHSS. Um, approaches the fit was uh, first analyzed by Professor Repaport and uh, Schilling and uh, this is the basically combination of this match filter plus the serial uh, search technique. Let us see the next slide to understand what exactly is going on here, but remember uh, here also we will consider that there are capital H number of the half frequencies involved in the synchronization sequence we will send a leader for it the way we sent the leader for the for the match filter <coughs> as well as the serial search and um, there are two stages uh, the first stage is uh, having one set of the of the um, threshold called the gamma th1 and second stage uses the another stage of the threshold which call it gamma th2 and uh, remember their searching is also divided into these two steps. The first step uh, finds suppose P capital P number of the searches capital P number of the tones out of the capital H to be searched and the remaining capital A uh, number of the tones will be searched in the second step such that capital P plus capital A the number of the tones searched by the stage 1 and the number of the tones searched by the stage 2 totally means combinedly gives the total number of the tones over which the hopping is going on. So, this is the block diagram of that two step architecture as I said the first stage ends here. Okay. The second stage consists of this to so stage 1 and stage 2. The first stage consists of a match filter. So, stage 1 is um, passive correlator based architecture and stage 2 is active correlator based architecture consisting of and as I told that uh, threshold value also of the first stage and second stages are not same they are different. The philosophy is what you know the whenever the signal is received here the match filter starts working. So, in the match filter we are having actually say um, its task is to find out say capital P number of the tones out of uh, out of your 
capital H number of the tones. So, out of capital H it is targeted to find out the capital P number of the tones. So, you need not to actually build up a match filter architecture here, um, where the number of the stages uh, parallel stages involved will be capital H. You need to put here now the very less number of the parallel chains of the match filters which is equal to capital P. But philosophy is that if the mass filter output for all those capital P number of the searches, he will search may be actually for over all the capital P and out of this if he can find actually for all the capital P number of the stages, there is a sufficient number of amount of the uh, statistics uh, such that the statistics is crossing the predefined gamma value or the threshold value. Then there is a indication that um, match filter is giving an indication that uh, there is a chance of uh, getting a synchronized uh, synchronized um, uh, tones and synchronized tones within this uh, received block. So, the received block is fed to the match filter and see received block is also fed to the active correlator bank of correlators, but active co uh, correlator bank never starts working without getting a trigger input from the match filter output. So, once match filter finds that the output of this threshold comparator at the output of the match filter is really high, that means the match filter output is crossing the predefined threshold, then actually it means that there is a chance that if you search over the same period, over the same set of the incoming chips, there is a chance that you can be able to find out the synchronization point. Then the active correlator is activated. And here is uh, we are having a bank of active correlators and any one of that bank of active correlator is activated. Suppose I have capital C number of the correlators here. So, out of capital C any one of the correlators will be activated uh, by the output of this stage 1. And he will try to do the serial search the mechanism that we have discussed in the previous one. And his task is now to find out the remaining capital A number of the tones. I mean finding out the remaining capital A number of the tones. And this search actually is a very um, is a long lengthy process and with serially it keeps on searching. And once he is searching we understand that the output of the every step output of the every tone when it is searching it should be sufficiently large, it should be most of the cases if it is actually well tuned, then only the output statistics z will be high and then any one of this bank of the threshold to comparators, comparators are having the second level of the thresholds, the output will be high. Now, if the output is high, then the control will give actually based on where you are in. And based on that control will either declare that the sink is completely locked, if it can find all the capital A position or if it is not then he will readjust the um, clock uh, slowly uh, such that uh, it can get aligned with that capital A number of the path. So, the situation is such that I understand that if serial search over all capital H number of the tones needs to be done, then it is a very lengthy process that the correlator cannot do, cannot do because it will take huge time. To reduce the time, the partial search is performed by the match filter by parallelizing the uh, by parallelizing the whole architecture and by parallelizing each, we choose uh, actually efficiently those capital P number of the tones the presence of whom also confirms that there is a chance that that uh, this is the this is a chunk of within this chunk of the bits the synchronization points will be able to be able to be searched by the active correlators then only we trigger the active correlators now remember one thing if my uh, active correlator does not find actually the certain sufficient amount of the z value the test statistics value, then what he will do he will actually uh, means declare that he could not find and he will actually be pulled he will be drawn in the pool of the correlators, where actually match filter will assign him some job at certain other point of time and say may be the second correlator some other correlator may be assigned the same job by the match filter. 
but whether match filter has the time to assign the job to the second or the third correlator that depends upon remaining time of the total acquisition time uh, the within which you need to complete the search. So, and if the situation is such that the all the correlators are busy at a particular point of time when the match filter has found some kind of the uh, pre sync uh, message that uh, he could actually get uh, by uh, comparing his output with this gamma T H 1. When all the correlators are busy at that moment even if actually match filter is trying to say that uh, there is a chance to find out some synchronization point within this uh, capital N C within the set of the received chips the correlator uh, none of the correlators will uh, take the input will none of the correlators will take the job and in such situation that request is totally discarded. So, see what we have done in this uh, combined uh, architecture is acquisition long huge acquisition time required by the serial active correlators is reduced and reduced by a great extent by partially implementing the match filter. So, the total h number of the tones we have divided into p plus a the p number of the tones will be searched by match filter and a number of the tones will be searched by the remaining active correlators. The p is chosen in such a way that um, uh, for those tones they may be scattered it is uh, they not mean they are not required to be sequential one they may be actually some rapid number of the tones, but if that random tones um, out of capital H uh, match filter is able to find out that will be done at very fast speed but with uh, uh, possibility that the probability of the false alarm is also high. And that is why actually next stage the serial search is very very essential and for the all those remaining one actually if you are doing I understand that for this capital A time for capital A number of the tones the serial search will be done in such a way that the detection probability will be very high. Here the false alarm probability is high detection probability is less but here the detection probability is very high. So, in average you it will be a balanced detection probability for a plus p number of the tones actually guaranteed by the active correlators if it can find the capital A number of the tones. At the same time actually the time the higher time that is uh, consumed by the uh, serial uh, architecture I mean the serial active uh, serial search active correlator based architecture that is counterbalanced by the very fast acquisition that is occurred here will this p number of the tones by the match filter. So, so one way actually the detection probability is getting balanced uh, by the serial active correlator another way the acquisition time is taken care of by the match filter. So, combinedly you it is expected that uh, with a low noise situation you will be able to detect both the p and a number of the tones and with a reasonable time of the acquisition and a very uh, with a reasonable time of acquisition and a satisfactory level of the detection probability. So, that is the gain of this uh, whole architecture where the um, uh, disadvantages of both the techniques are nicely combined to uh, get a pretty good and satisfactory performance of the detection probability as well as the acquisition time. So, this uh, two step mechanism proposed by professor Rapaport and Schilling they are very popular and they are widely used also in the PTT network. But remember as we have uh, incorporated both the mass filter as well as the um, active bank of active correlator architecture um, uh, complexity wise actually uh, you have not gained much because mass filter anyway mass filter is a hardware complex uh, com uh, hardware intense and uh, this guy is also having uh, several other architectures and uh, hardware components associated with it. So, we could not actually do much over the hardware complexity, but with that that is a cost function uh, of this architecture, but with respect to that we have gained a lot in the performance in terms of detection as well as the acquisition both has been improved by combining the earlier two mechanisms. So, uh, that is the plus point of this two step one. In this slide the same stuff is explained and remember at the end of this uh, capital H number of the hops if the active correlator has detected enough of the hops its output will exceed as I told 
and the second threshold indicating the sync lock has been achieved. But if it does not exceed the second threshold, then the correlator is made available to the pool and uh, for a new assignment to be done by the match filter. And uh, if there is no active correlator available when the match filter output has detected some part of the capital P number of the tones, then actually the whole notification will be completely ignored because nobody is free to take the charge or take the assignment to find the remaining capital A number of the tones. And um, so, you have a P number of the passive uh, match filters in the first stage and capital A number of the active correlators in the second stage. How will you divide this capital P versus capital A that is the design choice and uh, it will actually largely uh, affect the acquisition time constraint within which you are trying to complete the design and the detection probability or the minimum required detection probability of yours. Now, uh, relatively low reliability, but the fast performance of this match filter uh, we have used to present through the possible uh, code offsets before the time consuming, but uh, highly reliability active correlators are coming next um, deployed to improve the detection probability as I have already uh, told, mm, uh, but uh, hardware intense and hardware light that are also getting combined. And effect of the interfering signals and jamming tones uh, essentially will be of twofold. See, to increase the number of the false detection, actually, that jammer can increase the false detection probability in the first step of the two step process. And uh, if it is uh, really high, then it increases the load of the correlators in the second step because it increases the blocking probability also. And uh, however, this uh, in increases the uh, However, increases in the probability of the correctly detecting the beginning of a correct uh, synchronization sequence also is possible because of this whole architecture. We will see actually in the next few slides how this blocking probability is coming into picture. If we are having a large number of the false uh, detection coming from the first stage to the next. The false alarm and the misdetection probabilities, the expression we have seen earlier also, they are given repeated once again and uh, where actually this capital H will be equal to P and this gamma will be given by your gamma T H 1 by the total noise power for the first step. For the second step, capital H will be equal to capital A because A is the number of the step tones over which you are searching and uh, gamma will be uh, basically gamma T H 2 by the normalized total power, normalized uh, sorry total noise power. Uh, probability of the missed, detail, missed synchronization on a single pass through the synchronization process will be given by this expression, this is a newly developed one where we consider that there is a total misdetection. So, total misdetection means or miss synchronization means uh, it should be a combination of the first stage plus the second stage. So, this is a first stage misdetection and this is the second stage misdetection B C A, this is the Erlang B formula of the blocking probability it is uh, talking about and how this Erlang B formula. So, the total uh, misdetection is a function of not only the misdetection of the first stage and the second stage it is also a function of the blocking probability coming into picture, where this blocking probability or the Erlang B formula is given by this. And remember with uh, where this A, the value of this A is uh, uh, given by the false alarm of the stage number 1 and multiplied by the number of the tones assigned to the stage 2. And, uh, why this Erlang B formula is coming here is because it is basically a formula that reflects the likelihood that a call will be blocked in a normal telephone network mm, uh, and the call attempts to arrive according to a, if we consider that the uh, call is attending, uh, it is arriving as a random process and its arrival process is given by a Poisson distribution and it is an indication that um, here it is an indication that um, 
as an indication of whether our active correlator is available or code available uh, code uh, that active correlator is not available. Mm, it has some similarity with the telephone line actually the call is dropped if the uh, line is not free kind of. So, here actually the request from the match filter is getting dropped if your uh, correlators are none of the correlators are free. In the formula this blocking of formula uh, Allen blocking formula the C represents the number of the processing assets that are available you mean the number of the active correlators available in the second stage and the A this guy he is representing the number of the what is the task uh, performed that uh, it represents the rate at which the each of the correlators are given a typical task to perform. So, uh, basically we can map uh, the normal blocking call blocking probability of a telephone network can be mapped here with the uh, availability of a correlator in the second stage and uh, the job assigned to each of them based on that whether there is a chance that even if actually the um, mass filter output or the stage number 1 is uh, delivering something or requesting something to proceed the second stage uh, is discarding that um, effect and discarding that request. That is why actually you are seeing that the detection probability as well as the no sync uh, misdetection is a function of this blocking also. So, that is why it is like this we have reproduced the formula once again. We will try to plot this now in the second uh, slide we will try to plot this as a function of the several values of the c and uh, let us see if I plot it and this is a blocking probability remember this blocking probability is it is a function of this c right the number of the uh, number of the asset available in the stage 2 or the active correlator number of the active correlators are available and uh, so we can find a very nice result that um, if uh, the value of the c is less than 7, um, the blocking error probability will turn up and uh, this is because that uh, blocking probability will be increasing with as the SNR increases. But if you cross the number of the correlators greater than equal to 7, then the this typical characteristics totally disappear and uh, let us see how does it go. In the next slide, let us see the blocking probability actually it is a no sync. The, the no sync or the misdetection probability actually it improves if I keep on increasing the value of the correlators in the active stage. But uh, in, uh, if you always also goes up actually if you increase the SNR because the blocking probability Erlang B formula, uh, the Erlang formula that is there. If you look that, if you look inside that, we will see that you will see that if the SNR is increasing, the blocking probability is slowly increasing. And if the blocking probability is increasing, so hence the misdetection also again will be increasing. So, with the increment of the SNR, first the misdetection will be decreasing, and then based on a typical value of the C and the point after some certain point that varies also on the number of the based on the number of the correlators utilized for the active stage. The blocking probability suddenly starts increasing with the SNR and hence the, um, the SNR hence the detection probability also decreases and the misdetection increases slowly. And uh, beyond 7 actually at this kind of the graph uh, this issue is not there at all. And, uh, Though the false alarm probability it varies with the signal to noise ratio a lot, the threshold values uh, we can adjust for these curves to make the probability of false alarm approximately 10 to the power minus 5 at 0 dB SNR uh, for this kind of the cases. Now, if I try to understand what is the false alarm of the two steps jointly going on. So, false alarm probability of joint false alarm probability at the end should be given by the false alarm probability of the stage 1, false alarm probability of stage 2 and also the allowing the number of the times actually the second stage or the correlator serial correlator stage is running actually. So, 1 minus the blocking probability. 
and uh, whereas for the serial search mechanism alone the several passes to the sync frequencies could uh, and should be attempted before declaring the code lock which is uh, not possible really for your two stage technique because if you are trying to see the actual serial search mechanism we take multiple iterations over the multiple dwell time before declaring there is a sync lock here if you try to do that you cannot do it alone over the serial search um, uh, methods over the serial search portion you have to do it over the whole architecture so we do not prefer to go that way multiple attempts here you can make off but you have to actually then run here on the first stage as well as in the second stage and uh, in such a situation you have to uh, then uh, the whole false alarm probability will be increased and also the detection probability and the time acquisition of the acquisition everything will be under uh, time. So, probability that there is no sync acquired that will be finally, 1 by the minus of p h k of m where p h k we understand the probability of a hit on each and every individual pass. So, if I am going over the small m passes, so it will be raised to the power m and no sync means that there is no detection at all happening that will be a 1 minus the total 1. Here is the expression for the p h k the hit for each and every search and uh, no sync hence actually finally, will be given by this expression we have seen earlier. The total time acquired now which is the most important part therefore, which we did all this we realize that the detection probability has increased, but we have not uh, understood yet how far actually we are good in acquisition, in acquisition time. The acquisition time you do you remember we saw a small aim here in the acquisition time of the serial search now that aim is vanished uh, because we understand that uh, we are not really going to repeat it over the n number of the period and there is the acquisition time which will be ending up with. If I compare the active and the passive search techniques the mean acquisition time here will be a function of your this uh, number of the hopping if your hopping is more then your active serial search uh, techniques they will keep on actually increasing the mean acquisition time that is obvious and passive is far better compared to that because passive is parallelly implementing all that so there is no large increment over the if your h is increasing it is obvious we understand now and uh, now if i try to compare the serial search and the mass filter based uh, mean acquisition times that uh, that uh, i have shown uh, in the last slide we prefer the passive uh, approach to go ahead if we it is an acquisition time based and um, of two level approaches if i am trying to see for the ptt communications then here we are so a is equal to 20 means in the serial search process the 20 number of the tones are remaining to search 10 number of the tones remaining to search, 5 number of the tones remaining to search and 1 number of the tone remaining to search. So, if uh, your p is increased definitely if your number of the uh, if with a fixed number of a p let us first understand with a fixed number of p say equal to 6 or something like that it should be 5 this 5 is for here this number 5 is for this point 10 is for this point 15 is here hence and 20 is here. So, say first stage the number of the tones that uh, your mass filter is searching is equal to 5. If that is the situation, then if I am keeping only single tone to be searched in the serial active search technique, then your acquisition time is around 0 0.25 uh, second and more and more actually you are increasing the number of the tones to be searched by the serial search technique, keeping the capital P value the number of the tones to be searched by mass filter fixed hence you see the acquisition time is increasing ok. And uh, if I do uh, some uh, structure like this that we have increased the P up to this and then only one uh, total suppose 6 numbers of stuff needs to be done or total say 10 number of the uh, tones needs to be searched. So, you can actually increase it to be 7 or 8 and then you do it by 1 you increase it by 9 and then you do it by 1. So, you can avail it by a 
very low amount of the acquisition time. So, how we are going to choose the uh, segregation of E and A? It is um, not only a function of your acquisition time only, it is also there is a hardware complexity involved and it is uh, restriction from that point is also needs to be done and the detection probability, what is the target detection probability of yours. So, there is a crucial choice between these two tone distribution between the two stays architecture. So, with that uh, we are ending with this uh, frequency of wings spectrum uh, code acquisition techniques. We have learnt uh, three different techniques, first one was the match filter based giving us a very fast acquisition and uh, very at a cost of very high uh, probability of false alarm, detection probability is less. We then learnt a serial search active uh, correlator based uh, mechanism where we have uh, got uh, a very high detection probability at the cost of uh, very low, uh, very large acquisition time which is not acceptable. Then we have learned to combine both the techniques which is a two step technique where we have divided the search uh, mechanism between these two and uh, we have uh, we could improve the acquisition time to a reasonable one and detection probability also was improved by taking care of the it is a balanced actually some part balanced the uh, some section balanced the detection probability and some section balanced the acquisition. So, as a whole the detection probability as well as acquisition was improved. That is all about the code acquisition mechanism of the frequency hopping spectrum communication. Next module we will discuss about the frequency hopping uh, code uh, tracking.